going live. Let's go. Let's get our chats in order. <laughs> live chats. Oh, bumpy car can't hit it. All right, now we're gonna wait for people to come in. Still a little bit early. Yeah, get the exhaust wet off the bike. Yeah, on our way to Nashville. So, all right, I'll just give everybody. Still, everybody's still working. Here we go first. All right, here we go. People are coming in. Here we go. All right, three people. I know everybody still works, so I'll just have to catch the conversation later. And I will be making a video. I've already filmed it. I don't know if I'm gonna restructure or you know what's up. But we're gonna talk about C8. Let's go. Hell yeah. There we go. Uh, we're on our way to. This is Jeremy. We're in his yeah. car, and uh, I'm being a pansy. I'm not driving. No, I just wanted to actually go live. Let's see the Corvette. Um, we're gonna talk all about Corvette today because I'm fired up. Um, this is like my, I guess this will be the first time we're talking about the C8. And um, I, I'm probably like a lot of you guys, uh, what do you think about, before I say, what, what do you think about the Corvette? Honestly, it's a car that I would. Everybody hear us? Think about buying, even though I'm a diehard Mustang guy. Yeah. Uh, simply because I like doing autocross more than drag racing. Uh-huh. In a mid-engine balanced car car will be utterly fantastic for that yeah so 20 is 2020 is gorgeous it's a 60,000 bargain 60 well it's not a bargain that's, that's the thing that's what we can talk about it's not a bargain it's a joke and here's why I love the new C8 oh my gosh I want one but we're going to talk why this is really what we're going to talk about is going to make what is stuck in my shoe there we go um the c8 we're going to talk about the c8 and why it makes the gt500 just a little bit more special and possibly possibly uh, a better value uh even if it's more money so 495 horsepower yeah and it's got what 70 470 pound feet of torque yeah with with this is what this shit that nobody's talking about you have to have the Z51 package to get all of that. It's a little bit less power, not by much, but a little bit less power if uh, you go with a base. Base, remember what a base, I want everybody to think about this for a second. What's up everybody that's coming in? We have a fired up uh, conversation. <laughs> so, all right, what is a base 2020 GT500? Look, Mustang, yeah, yeah. base 2020 GT500 cost no uh delivery fees none of that it's a seven no gas guzzler tax it's a seventy one thousand dollar car right it's it's just about it's a basic we'll say 70. it's i think it's a little bit beneath 71. now what is a base uh ca cost they're saying under 60. that's no damn surprise well, because what is a c7 and one LT, one LT Stingray cost. Well, that's going to be that fifty nine ninety nine nine whatever you know. It's going to be a it's two a, pennies away. It's 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 sixty can, grand. It's close to sixty. It's less, but it's close to sixty. I give Chevrolet props for not making this thing unattainable. But here's the deal. Everybody's comparing a C8 versus a GT500. They're talking about a $60,000 car versus a $100,000 car. They're talking about, now, I wish that Serpent Stings was with us in the car because he's as fired up and he's actually got me because we were over at his house this weekend and he put a lot of things in, into perspective. Because I was, I was actually like a lot of Americans right now or people across the world talking about like, uh, oh my God, it's $60,000. Why in the hell would I think about a GT500? The problem is you're taking a base car, base wheels, base brakes, no performance goodies, no magnetic ride, no rear spoiler, nothing. No front camera, uh, no heating cooled seats, no luxury, sh shit, nothing. And you're comparing it to the most trick down to slip that in every time they said under three seconds for zero to 60. A base, okay, look, this is an, a naturally aspirated car. Uh, Z51 is uh, really not that expensive, like five, maybe six K. Well, that's what I'm gonna get at. 
So, but everybody's talking about base, 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 base. So by the time you do a Z51, it becomes sixty-five, sixty-six, sixty-seven thousand dollars in a one LT. Let's pretend like it's got cloth interior. You ain't getting shit. I used to sell Chevrolet, so I know about the product line. I know about trim levels and stuff like that. So we have to keep it comparable. You have to keep it comparable. You have to take a uh, a like optioned vehicle and compare it to a like optioned vehicle. So the, you guys know, hopefully, that the GT500 is even in its base trim is no by no means base. It is beautiful. It's got a leather interior. It's got the, the digital dash, which the Corvette does too. But it's got heated, cooled seats. It has two hot over 260 more horsepower. It's supercharged. Has jive freaking enormous brakes. It has suspension. It has magnetic ride. It has all of that shit. It's got spoilers. It's got aerodynamics. It's got it all. It's got the bodywork. With you know, and then. Uh, I don't know. I charge you guys to pull up, maybe Google search, uh, what a the base model, not a Z51, not the spoiler, no nothing. A um, who else here is a bandwagon and jumping on the CA bandwagon? All of you. Well, I I love it too, but we're still going to continue this conversation because uh, man, this is heated. We're already in for like six minutes. Um, he's basically admitted four got their asses handed. Well, no, they did and they didn't. Um, so if you talk about a 495 horsepower car that's mid-engine that does 0 to 60 and 3 point or yeah 3.0 seconds so 3 seconds or less I should have brought something to drink I'm freaking thirsty <laughs> um, that you honestly everybody should be already expecting that you're taking an engine and you're putting it over the rear axles and you're going to make grip uh, and excuse me if, if serpent things were here and I'm going to say it too 0 to 60 is a matter, is not a matter, really a matter of speed. Um, what's up to you? What's going on? Everybody that's coming in. 0 to 60 is not about speed. It is a little bit, but it's also, it's more importantly, a measure of what? Traction. 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 Who can hook better? Okay. And here we go. So, we have a rear-wheel drive car, front engine, G500. It weighs a lot more. They're a lot more. 3,100 pounds for the CA. Let's pretend it's 800 pounds heavier than the CA, which is probably accurate. It's about toward contraction. Amen. So, uh, what happens? What? Ha I need a haircut. Bad. Good Lord, look at that shit. <laughs> um, <laughs> what happens after 100? What happens after 100? What happens in a quarter mile? Yeah, you got to think it's... It's in what? It's an uh, markups will hurt. Yeah, LT2 engine, isn't it? Uh, it's an LT2, so it's basically, an old pushrod GM motor. It's, it's a, not going to have a top end. It's well, it's yes, not yes, like a coyote. Yes, no, yeah, coyote or voodoo or predator. Right. Well, it's but remember, it's it's that is a good, very valid argument. If we're comparing the C8 naturally aspirated to like a GT350. Yeah, exactly. You're talking about an RPM top out on that Corvette. It's six thousand sixty-five hundred versus a car that doesn't top out till past eight thousand. Yeah. So um, the uh, Corvette's going to probably run. I don't know what it is, but it's probably going to redline less. But that doesn't matter. None of that shit matters. It's going to be faster zero to sixty than a Shelby. Yes, uh, that is absolutely amazing. Uh, three seconds. If you've never gone zero to sixty in three seconds, I mean, it's it's a, it's quite a feeling. It's pretty impressive. But uh, the Shelby's going to do it about three and a half. But again, it's a measure of traction, and uh, both of them have dual clutch transmissions. So we have an apples to apples there. One's got seven. One's got eight speed. Doesn't matter. Let me turn on these lights see if they help. No. Well, maybe. Um, GT500 has to play catch up in the one fourth mile. Uh, thanks to that's a tall order <coughs> not necessarily that may be true but it also may not it's got the power to do it yeah that's the thing is what's it, it's got remember 260 more horsepower yes it takes more to move that the car about that speed we probably can make a safe uh guesstimation 
that the uh, GT500 will probably do zero to 60. Uh, fuck what you want, buy Two different cut brands, yeah, just people talking. Uh, here, heard it was gonna be traditional push rod, but I admit I have, haven't done any research on it yet. Yeah, it's, it's, um. It is a push rod. It's, a, yeah, it's a push rod. Um, I'm not saying, remember, while we're talking about this, I'm not saying one is better than the other. What I, what I want to do is talk about, um, what I want to do is give you guys something to think about, because nobody on the internet is talking about this. They're not, that, that in the sense that they are not like-minded trim levels. They're not like, they're actually very different cars. Yeah. Now, one is gonna be a performer. We can probably estimate that the GT500 will do in a quarter mile, probably like, let's say a 10.5, probably like a 10.7. You know, just based off of weight and performance that it's gonna give. It's gonna be uh, high six to the wheels, maybe a little better, let's say it's 700. You know, it's, it's uh, I think it'll be a little less, but you do have to add in weight. So I think that they might actually be pretty close, but um, is the quarterback gonna get off the line faster? Yeah, uh, as advertised, but um, every C8 that has been seen so far are not base models and they are heavily optioned and right. not under, that's what I'm talking about. Everybody's like, holy crap, look at that beautiful car and it's under 60. You could not be further from the truth. To get that speed, you're gonna be in the mid 70s, if not 80,000. Those red cars, there was one, because we were watching that YouTube. White one. The white one that we saw was base. It had like the base wheels, there were smaller, base brakes, all that shit. The interior was base, everything, there was no splitters, no spoilers, it was base. Uh, then you have the ones that they, everybody's, Goo goo eyeing over, which I am too, believe me. It's uh, your C51, probably a 3LT trim level. Everybody still with us? Can you hear us? Can you see us? Are we good to go? Please tell me. Because um, what we were talking about. Oh, optioning out a. Uh, uh, and then everybody drops out and they goes away. They go away. Yeah. All right, are we back? Somebody please tell me we're back. I hate my... We're driving through like a dead spot. So hopefully we don't drop out of uh, signal again. But... Uh, let's see, here we got... Who's with us? No, it should be connected. It's still rolling, so we're still alive. But anyway, all right, so a C8 Z51 2 or 3 LT is going to be kissing $70,000. And that puts it right in the line price-wise with the new GT500. So then you got it. So then you have an apple. So apples similar. So the one bad thing is going to kill the Shelby. But we are talking about price at this point because that's what everybody's concerned about is perform. What do you get the money? Well, if you have a Z51 23 LT with some options, it becomes somehow the same price as a GT500, right? And I think I got to turn my comments on. That's it's on. So then, where you know. What's the better bargain at that point? You want a supercharged car? Uh, I know, I know, I know we know about a $10,000 in add-ons uh, for dealer markup. I was reading that guy's comment. Yeah, I know, we're, we're not talking about that. We will, but if hypothetically you could get them, we're talking about the cars, we're not talking about dealerships. We're talking about cars. So a Z51 Stingray, two or three LT is gonna be kissing $70,000 or more and a no options a gt500 with a blower arrow suspension brakes all that stuff is about the same money what at that point is the better buy that's really i guess up to the individual but because uh i think that um in base trim if you're going to compare it to a mustang 
you got to keep it like naturally aspirated versus naturally aspirated. Exactly. Because honestly, the, the C8 and the GT500 are two totally different cars. And know that Corvette will do a ZL1. A ZR1? Or a ZR1, yeah. Yeah, possibly, possibly. Yeah. But for sure shit, don't know about Grand Sport, but for sure shit, you bet your ass, probably the next one to two years, just... some technical difficulties but um anyway so you have a z06 c8 uh 2020 gt500 let's pretend like it's 2021 because that may be what it was but anyway it doesn't matter supercharged corvette new corvette supercharged mustang new mustang shelby um then they are comparable cars in their base trims then you add on options you have several options with a gt500 and then you have that big one the carbon fiber package, eighteen thousand five hundred dollars, eighteen thousand five. But with you know the Corvette has similar options. What you know like a C7 Z06 has like the Z07 package, yeah. and then you can option interior seats, all that shit. So uh, the Mustang has simplified some of that. You get less options, but they give you a lot. But if you trim them out to be similar price points, then then the Corvette is somehow going to be a faster, better buy, probably, maybe. But you're both going to have near $100,000 cars if they're completely optioned out, except for the fact that if you have the option out of Corvette, it's going to be twenty dollars or $30,000 more. Yeah, at the top of the line, Corvette's, what, one thirty-five right now? You can get a Z06, yeah, you can get a Z06 with, like, tons of shit. And you can have it. I'm going to try to get to these comments. Uh, Body Shop is telling me I just released a video. Please go check out that. Check out the video from earlier, and it talks all about the estimation of uh, the, the body damage. Anyway, but yeah, two different cars. So, um, but a Z06 GT500. That's your apples to apples comparison. Um, but the Corvette, at the end of the day, will be more money. Yes, you're going to pay. Probably twenty thousand dollars for a ninety-six thousand, a hundred thousand dollar Mustang GT five hundred. But in it, well, in it with all options. Uh, so if you go all in with the GT five hundred, carbon fiber package, everything, add in markup. <coughs> excuse me. Add in markup. You're probably at one hundred twenty. Yeah. If you have a three LZ Z06 C8. It's going to be more money than that. It's going to be $130,000 probably. Then markup. Then you look at their performance. What is that Z06 going to do to the GT500? It's going to slaughter it. Uh, because you have less weight. It's also the, a mid-engine. It's a mid-engine car. It's going to be a supercar. Uh, it will be a supercar. It's going to put out the same stuff. A supercharged version is going to be insane. Yeah, it's going to come. It's raining, yes. It's like pouring outside. And uh, anyway, so, but I, I just think it's it's funny that everybody's comparing these two cars, uh, but they're not even they're not even on the same page. One is a great car. It's like a Porsche versus a Civic. Honestly, you know, what you got to look like, at, and here's the war that's over. Huh? Camaro and Mustang are the competing cars. They're both pony cars. And Chevy just said they're putting, they're either canceling the Camaro or putting it on hold because the 500 smashed them. Because if you want to compare apples to apples, car to car, it's the ZL1 Camaro versus the 500. They're the two versions of the cars that have blowers. And there is no way that ZL1 will come close to a GT500. So you're already 100 horsepower down, and on the Mustang is already 400 pounds lighter. So yeah, a, um, I agree, Ford needs to drop some of the prices. I've said that before, they should have killed off the GT350 yeah. um, in order to make the GT500, um, you know, top more- trim GT500 should have been no more than 80. Yeah, I think a top trim GT500, 85, $80,000, $85,000, People would be like, they, this even would be a conversation. People would be like, 500, 500, 500. But, um, 
I think in whichever direction you go, I would love to have both. Uh, which one I would, but if I had to choose one, if I had to choose one right now today, yeah, for, uh, you're exactly right. Uh, GM has said, hey, what are you guys doing in Europe? I see your McLaren's over there. I see your Ferraris and Lamborghinis. Hey, hold my ear. Yeah, That's thanks. what they have done. They have created an American supercar uh, with, uh, with a lot of exotic appeal. Um, anyway, so I am the interior of that Corvette. I am the interior of that Corvette is absolute is absolute sex oh that thing's awesome it's it's wonderful it, it's uh it's it's beautiful in all the right places i don't really like the silk everything else the buttons down the center there i can get used to it i don't hate it but i don't love it i honestly think it's kind of cool it's it's neat it's, 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 it's that neat. car is built around the driver this is built to have two people in it both people can mess with Center stack. The Mustang has always been that, that commuter with power, the pony car, you know, something to have fun with. The Corvette was more purpose built to, you it's know, a dream car fuck shit well it up on a, on a racetrack, like a road course, and uh, and have luxury at the same time. Yep. Luxury. But and another way to look at it, and I just thought about this, all right, the must, uh, Ford bought several Porsche 911 Carrera 2s to make the 18 perform better than them. So you've team perform better than them. So you've got a Mustang that can outdo a car worth double its price. Yeah, so the, the Mustang so Corvette's doing it and it's sticking it it's destroy ponies because it's not the same class of car. Come on, cell phone signal. Let's go. Let's get with the program. I got stuff to say. I I got he keeps going away! I keep losing the signal. Um, it's bad buffering. I'm sorry. I apologize. I can't help it. But if I could put it in a cell phone and send it off the car, believe me, I would. Anyway, another lazy single cam engine. Why don't they put an overhead cam in these cars? Yeah, I mean, now here, here's who's disappointed. I want to know who's disappointed. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. A, a GT500 will drag a vet. I think in, in a one in the quarter mile, uh, we might be surprised because everybody's hooping and hollering over zero to sixty times in the C8, and I agree, it's fast. Three seconds to sixty is quick, but what the hell does it do to one hundred? What does it do to one hundred and twenty? Does it die off at the end? Is it geared really low for acceleration? But I mean, again, yeah, zero to sixty times are a measure of traction. Yes, performance too, but a lot of traction. One of the things I read said the way that DC was geared is gear one is to just to go gears two, three, four, and five are your usable gears, like your everyday gear. Let's go. I need, to, I need to trim my beard, I think. I need a haircut really badly. So do I. That was but, what I was going to do before you wrecked your car and I came out here. Look. <laughs> anyway, so, yeah, I, I'm excited to see both of the cars in the wild. I'm excited to run, to drive both. Uh, Stang Mode's going to still get a GT500, and I think that that actually might be a smart move. Um, if, if I were to buy one, I would get definitely, definitely get the C8. But the problem is these. $60,000. No. I want a Z51 bare minimum. and uh, That's a must. Well, if I were C7 shopping, I would get a, if I were shopping brand new C7, I would go Grand Sport, personally. Um, yeah. It's a lot of bang for the buck. And uh, you can get them under $80,000. It's going to whoop its ass, though, on the Dial up internet service. I can't help it. I'm sorry. I'll be dead honest. I, I'd be hard. I'd be hard pressed. I mean, if someone was to give me a C7 today, I'd hold on to it and put it in the garage just to trade it into a C8. Yeah. So guys, I know it's buffering. 
I will have a simplified video of all of this later on. Um, so, <laughs> if you're annoyed by the internet, which I can't help, look at cell phone tower right over there. Give me signal, give me signal. Um, anyway, it's, uh, yeah, I just think that everybody needs to slow down a minute and think about what we're comparing. He's recharging. No signals. Yes. I'm going to go down. Right there. Okay. Looks like we're back. So here's something about. Yeah, we know about the the, the ADM that's going to be on the uh, uh, don't drive in stream. Everybody gets so. And it's like, look, look, I'm bringing new content, and they're all like, ah, 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 it sucks. My eyes are on own, and in my mirrors, I mean, you're the one looking at the camera. <laughs> Sometimes. Avoid <laughs> it. We can't avoid it. But the thing is, the C8 does have an advantage over Ford. Since that war, it almost still makes the GT500 better because it's going to be special. Look, in two years, there's going to be C8s everywhere. That's what I was about to say. Everywhere. Yeah. In a year and a half, you'll still be able to get a hundred grand and for your what, your anybody, GT500. Anybody that pays ADM, in my opinion, on a oh. C8 Corvette is retarded because you're you're buying a mass-produced car. It's like going to buy a, a Toyota Camry and paying to do that. Just give it a couple of months. Believe me, it's not making them for the next five or six years. So, and then also, I mean, really, you should wait. Zero six. You know what I mean? I definitely would not buy the first model year of something that drastically different. That's well. That could go both ways with the Shelby 500 too, because it does also have a double That's clutch. True. So it's a new transmission and it's a supercharged Voodoo with a cross plane. He's telling the guy to honk. Yeah, I know. But how about you move the fuck out of the way? He just look. It's a Hyundai. Off. Get out of the way. Anybody that saw that video earlier? Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, people can catch it later. I mean, I was. Um, anyway, looks like they're having a damn conversation here. It keeps going in and out. Um, Tip, try, try, what does that say? Somebody said you're gay, honestly. I don't I hope you're not talking to me because I'm definitely fucking not. So, uh, these guys are fucked. Sorry, I never subscribed. But sorry, I ever subscribed to who? To, to me? Well, I'm sorry. Then leave, I guess. That's the thing. Just... Wait a minute now. You can't say that. I can say whatever the hell I'm doing. It's my YouTube channel. If you don't like it, fucking watch or don't. I don't give a shit. I do care, yeah. but if you leave hate, it's like, I guess you're entitled to opinion. I am putting myself on social media, but if you want to just come on there and talk shit, you're very welcome to do so, but I'm also very welcome to say, fuck you. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so just, just not forget that shit, but because we were car enthusiasts at the end of the day, um, I'm very passionate about the C8. I want one badly. And I, I really kind of feel like my I need one in my life. Not now, but I would probably, me personally, I'm probably going to wait like a year or two, let them hit the used market, let somebody else take the hit because it's not a specialty car. They're going to depreciate the same yes. as all the other Corvettes. It may take a year or two to do that, um, but... You know, it is what it is. It's going to be a mass-produced car, but it is very exciting that Corvette is going in this direction, um, and I, I, I love it. I love the design. I, I do wish that the tail lights uh, were. I like them. I, I like. Don't have any no, issue no, no. With the I like. I love them, but I think that it would have been cool if they went back to just the circular tail lights on that body style, or you know. Maybe the ovals. I, I see what you're saying, but there's so many corners on that thing right now. I think a square light looks better. It, it, but that's just me. Well, I mean, what if it was got... more rectangular? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I don't know. It, it, I think I don't. I, I think that there's not a bad angle on the car. 
I think it looks good in any direction. I am sold. I honestly think you know when I, mean? I finish paying this one off, especially if I can get, I mean, both my Mustangs will be paid off roughly the same time, like two, three months apart. Yeah. I, guess it, I could trade in both my EcoBoost and this one and see my getting into a Corvette. Unless I full blow out this one and make it race car and then I have my Corvette as a daily driver. Wouldn't that be funny? Don Juan made a very valid point. What was that? The taillights do look good, but the, the, the Z51 wing is kind of like a U. It's like bent. It's kind of weird. I think they probably did that for visibility. but And aero. Uh, because what they did with that is it made it like a makeshift gurney flap. Because if you look at the outsides, there's much more of a lip up. It looks, more fucking, it looks fucking retarded. But, but again, that's, that's my favorite. I opinion. had the beholder. Yeah. I kind of like it. To each his own, and that's what it's all about. What I like, you may not. What you like, I might not like. And that's uh, that's okay. That's okay. People get over it. But uh, actually functions. It's for looks where actually functions. Time will tell. I think it's probably a bit of both. It's kind of like the, the performance back. Level 1 spoiler on the uh, AG19 Mustangs. You know, it's it's uh, it does serve a purpose. It is also there, you know, so it does have some functionality. It is also there for you know cosmetics and uh, to to make it look a little bit. My thing, uh, you can get a different wing. Well, here's the thing. I saw some other pictures that had a bigger wing on it, so I'm not really sure what that was about. But it be another option was, package they haven't released to the public. Well, we know that there's like 12 colors. Yes. There's a lot of colors. So. Um, and they've openly shown us only three red, white, blue. Well, uh, there's a, a grabber blue looking color that's floating around the internet now, and it's wicked. It's beautiful. So I'm very excited to see what's coming. And uh, pretty cool that, you know, they're making them in Bowling Green, which I live down, like an hour and a half away from. So I could just maybe go down there, take a tour, and see some. Well, they talked but, about in one of the videos we watched, I think it was, uh, I don't remember the guy's channel, but he's been around for a while. Yeah. They talked about allowing uh, the, customers the, to go there and watch their car being made. The colors on the website? Okay. They must have just did that. Because I, I literally just watched videos so they're not releasing anything yet. But if they're there, I'm going to go definitely check it out. Um, because I would like to go, like, build one just to, like, you know, see. I think it would be exciting. And, uh... I built a C7 a couple years ago, a Grand Sport with a, a I, I cut corners, try to make it somewhat affordable, just to just to play around and see. And it was eighty thousand it was like eighty-five grand. So, I did the same thing when I was building this. Yeah. Um, we'll have aftermarket parts one day. Do, 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 do. You can spec them on Corvette's website. Okay, cool. I'll go check out the website. I did not know that they came up, so that's well, awesome. people are buying them because the dude that does the, the coating and paint correction on my car, since he's already got an appointment for the uh, the clear bra, the expel paint protection, and the the ceramic coating. Damn. Yeah. Who sounds like a parrot? Do I sound like a parrot? Doomsday, who are you talking about? How's your car doing, by the way? I want to interact with people now. I think I've said what I need to say. Both are great. I just think that they need to focus on... Wow! That's nice, dude. That's really nice. That was about an accident. That was a little fucked up. And we're in your car. And yeah. people say that I'm a bad driver. Look, <laughs> I'm not driving, guys. We almost got into another accident. Wouldn't be my fault. That dude just up and turned from an exit lane I know. back in front of me. So yes, yeah, so you apparently you can spec out a GT500. Um, he's mad because the GT500 is ass. Look, how many? Oh shit! What the hell happened? How many drinks have we had today? None. I'm just uh, excited to talk about cars, and that's I would think that people would be too if you're watching a YouTube video about cars. Are you not excited? Being, I'm being very sarcastic. Uh, all right. So, G, uh, G, yeah, Stangmo is going to keep his order of the GT500. Here's the other deal. Yeah, everybody's bailing. I talked to a reliable source that says that uh, there is a ton 
a ton of allocations that are still left open or are becoming open on the, uh, you know, like people ordering them and stuff like that, snagging them up mm -hmm. on the, the Shelby GT500. <coughs> uh, everybody's jumping ship. And a lot of it does have to do with price, you know, but they're, they're looking at, um, I guess, some, some specs that aren't out yet, you know, because we don't have the full picture. We also still don't, 100K for uh, for that car is outrageous. But would you uh, would you say that $100,000 for a Z06 is outrageous? That's my point. Is a hundred thousand dollars Z06 with the same horsepower or less uh, outrageous compared to a hundred thousand dollar? If they're both the cost the same, everybody's that's again that's what I'm talking about. Everybody's, it's the cost. everybody's talking about a naturally aspirated uh, car that that yeah. starts at sixty and comparing it to a loaded GT500 for a hundred. Gotta look that GT500. You have the pants off base the model and then top trim. Stop doing that. You have a supercharger in there. If you go base for base, you have to go 60,000 versus base Mustang 500, Shelby 500. Well, and there's 11,000. There's about 11 grand of difference in there. But you're getting suspension, aero, uh, power, all of that stuff. I'm not saying that one is better than the other. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just talking about the facts. They're not an apples to apples. It's comparison. not apples to apples. They're different classes of cars. It's a performance value comparison. Yeah. But. What, we don't know what uh, I guess either car is going to do in a quarter mile. At least I don't. You know, maybe somebody will chime in here and say something. Maybe they'll be like, "Oh, they released the, the, the quarter mile times for the, the C8." Great, tell me what is it? Well, the 500s are due out in November, and the C8s are due out in what February? Yeah, but the thing is also like, what's what's the GT500? We don't know. What's the GT500? 4,100 pounds is what we think. That's my guess. So. Um, Unless, I mean, the carbon fiber one might be a little less. You might be able to trim that down to 38. Well, here, here's a good one. Nobody should pay $100,000 for a Mustang. Well, the thing is they're trying to, what I think Ford is doing. Now, Serpent Sings mentioned this yesterday. He talked about the, uh, the, the problem that why people have such a hard time with $100,000 for a Mustang. And I do too, believe me, is the fact that uh, like with Ch Chevrolet, you have a Camaro and then you have the Corvette. You have two different two different cars. Uh, so you have your attainable one and then you have... Now, they should have done like a Mustang and then they should have done something else. Like, uh, pos I don't a know. A more affordable Ford GT. Uh, I'm not saying... Honest. Yeah, I'm not saying split the Mustang from the Shelby name. I know means I'm not saying that. But I'm talking about all the way from the get-go. But yes, it is kind of hard to swallow $100,000 for a Ford Mustang because at the end of the day, What's different about the Mustang's bodywork and stuff like that? The, uh, the, the same platform. The GT500. It's got a bunch of stuff on it. Yes. Um, it, would I pay 100 grand for a GT500? Fuck and no. Absolutely not. It, it's a, what Serpent Stank was saying is, all right. Bottom line is, it is a Mustang. You can get into a GT, the 460 horsepower GT. For thirty-five thousand dollars, and then you add enough options to make it a hundred thousand dollar car. Because yeah. worst comes to worst, Shelby is now it's a trim level. When you go to buy build a Mustang, you want an EcoBoost, a premium EcoBoost, a convertible, a, a regular five uh, O, a well, premium five O, a Shelby GT three fifty, Shelby GT five hundred. Well, it's not a trim level. It's it's a well, specialty it's, car. Yeah, it's an options package, or however you want to put it. It's not well, a it's, different car. Like you can build a Camaro or it, a Corvette. It is kind of a different car because they don't they're they're rare. Like a GT three fifty. They it's, are a uh, limited production. It's car. a limited production vehicle. It is like a, it's not like a let's say a Camaro. A ZL one is a um, there's also options levels. But then there's the, the Bullet. It, that's another... It, it's literally... The Bullet Mustang is an option package. This is a 401A car. Uh, a yeah, Bullet's a 501A I can, car. I see, I see what you're saying. Yeah, I see that. They're um, still all... If you were to take all the body panels off of this and all the body panels off of 500, you would not be able to tell them apart unless you looked at the engine and looked at the transmission. They're both Magnaride cars. Yeah. Bigger brakes on the 500. But that comes with an options package. 
just like there's smaller brakes on the base Mustang and there's the Brembo's on the Performance Pack Mustang. I, I mean, yeah. You I, can still end up with a Ford Mustang, that name, for $35,000. Yeah, it's at the end of the day, and Space Forum is a $30,000 rental car. And then that's why it's hard and to say, okay, say, now that there's enough things added to it to make it now $100,000. That's $70,000 worth of stuff added to a $30,000 car. Yeah, we know the 500 and 350 are totally different. Um, oh, yeah, it's a different motor. Different You've one. got the Predator motor versus the uh, the 302. They're, I understand that. They're similar. They have this, you know, like the it's still 5.2 liter, different, different cranks. Um, you know, the... the uh, well, the Predator motor and the Voodoo are the same thing. Yeah, the well, I mean, it, e even even the Voodoo is like, a, it's an evolution of, of the Coyote, if you will. It's, yeah. They share similar architecture. As far as I know, the um, heads are even the same. You can swap out the heads. Well, I, I don't know. But um, um, at the end of the day, if you want to look at the 65-year-old tired motherfucker by a Corvette. Well, I mean, there is a different... Is not a tired-looking Corvette. The C8 ain't not tired about that. No. The C8, and I'll be honest, the two best looking Corvettes are that one made 60 some years ago. I think he might be talking about today. people. I think he might be talking about people's age. Well, the Corvette, though, honestly, have, they that, they do attract a certain buyer. Um, it's, and most of them may be older gentlemen because, let's be honest, can an 18 year old kid out of high school afford a Corvette? No. Probably not. That's why you see them in EcoBoost and base model GTs. Yeah, that's what my point. Can they get a Mustang? Probably. Not a lot of options, but you could get it done. You know, so there there are, uh, the Corvette's a little bit more exclusive. Um, and people are getting a little bit older. I'm 24, two C6s is great. But I, I know you are, Kurt AJ. <laughs> you are uh, a stellar guy and you have a good job and you've had it for a while. And uh, uh, t tell me, how do you like the R8? Are you still enjoying it? Um, anyway, but uh, high school graduate, can't afford a Mustang at 18 to 20 years old, but not necessarily a Corvette. A uh, new one. I'm talking about new, not pre-owned. Yeah, I mean, you're so, not going to walk in as a 21-year-old and walk out with a C8 without... Yeah. I mean, you will be the exception, not the rule, if you do that. And there's exceptions to everything. Yeah, we're not talking about daddy and mommy's money here either. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, there's the exceptions that they can they can uh, they can do that with enough money down, you can buy anything too. So um, you can tell the GT500 has the last minute. Totally agree with that. That the uh, yeah, still no quarter mile numbers. The prop Ford. I kind of agree with that comment. Ford, yes, it's been in production. They've thought I've been thinking about this for years. But I don't know why they were so worried about... It's not like... I think it the was body's the same, the mostly. It's body panels. It's it's just like a refreshed 1819 Mustang. You know, they, they, they got money in developing new parts. The 18 and the 18 Plus was a heavy, heavy refresh. Yeah. So, but so is the GT500. It looks too much like a 15 to 17. Oh, yeah, it's reconnected. I think it's still, uh... Come on, Internet, let's go. We're in Nashville. I know, we're, we're in Nashville. Here we go. We got connection back. So, to me, the GG500 does, even with the carbon fiber everything, does not personally look like it's, um... Ah... Uh, it looks like it should have come out three years ago with those headlights. Do it. I'm sure the performance will. Now, word on the street is, and I just heard things with, is basically who we heard this from, is that he's, he knows some people in the know, and uh, the, the GT500 will shock a lot of people with road course times and stuff like that. Like, it's going to perform very well for what it is. But I think that um, it, it still looks a little too plain to me, and I hate to say that. It's got a really aggressive front end hood. And the back looks great, but the side profile looks like my car. Um, it just doesn't, uh, and that's always been my problem, is like, they waited so long to release a GT500 on the S550 that by now it looks dated. Those I, it looks, to go a step backwards in those headlights is a real pet peeve of mine. They did it because, you know, the fenders are wider stuff. But, but yeah. my thing is, you put so much R&D and money into the rest of the development of the car, you couldn't sink another, you know, 
whatever into the development of something a little bit more better headlight and uh, that was a lot of people's problem i understand why that they're there but it's kind of like ah you got it 95 percent right and you just the stuff that kind of mattered it's like um why is my mode still not a default yeah, yeah my mode should be the mode this car starts in why is my mode not a default <laughs> it's um you know it's what we've all been it, it's, it's my mode it's supposed to be Corvette or GM got it right with a Corvette and Camaro. You know, you can default it in sport mode and have it in track for the exhaust. So why why can't we do that? Why do I still gotta flip a switch? I I hate it. Uh, but the the uh, C8 seems to have checked all of the bo the boxes correctly. Um, I think that uh, now here's a here's an interesting question. Pretend like it's a 750 horsepower, or close to it, um, Z06 package in the CA. And then you're shopping that against like a McLaren. You know, like yeah, a 5, five seven, Well, No, it couldn't be a 570. It had to be like a 720S. That's what I think Chevy's going What's for. What's the better bargain there? Well, obviously Corvette. And well, I, I, I personally kind of like the looks of the Corvette as much, I don't want to say better, but as much as the... Um, like a 720s yeah uh, but like you know, i said but, before i don't think it's i think of uh, chevy lost its fight against the mustang with the camaro and they're dumping they're they're using the corvette to basically do what mustang did to the porsche yeah because mustang is selling every bit as well as porsches are in germany it's the number one selling sports car in the world because it just flat performs yeah if they're i mean Corvette can steal a massive market in Europe because they are making it right-hand drive. It will be a world car like the Mustang, and if they're stabbing at the people that will spend $450,000 on a Ferrari, and they can get that same Ferrari, I mean, honestly, not the same, but you've got a quarter of the money yeah. into a Corvette, and it still runs over there? I mean, that's a huge market... Yeah, the vet is a total refresh. The Mustang is cosmetic. Uh, well, I a little mean, more than cosmetic. Transmission, well, motor. There's. I'm gonna say not substantial changes. I'm gonna say the S650, the next clean damn, sheet. Don't you? What's up? Motherfucker, damn near ran into the back of me. This next, the next clean sheet Mustang build. The S650 is going to um, make a lot of dreams come true. I hope. But um, anyway, I got a question on here. I'm trying to find it. How to start your a brand new YouTube channel, car channel, and uh, simply is just have a passion and um, make content. And it's going to be very hard to get started, but be passionate about it. Don't worry about money or any of that because there is none. Not, not for us little people. So you got to just do it for the knowledge, do it for the passion. Uh, try to be as humble as possible, but you gotta have fun with it too. And then accidents do happen along the way. And my th my thing is my philosophy is, is film everything, document everything. So, um, you know, like uh, we've had a bunch of wrecks and stuff like that. I've never had that many wrecks in my life, as as I have with this this car that I've got now. But it's very unfortunate. And everybody wants to know is like every, I've got a couple of comments where we're like, why um, does your wife not have a car? It's like look, we were car shopping. But she happened to use my car that night and got into an accident. Didn't mean that we weren't car shop. And she had a job before before she was a stay-at-home mommy. Um, so she didn't want one. I mean, that's honestly the best and tr most truthful answer. She didn't want one. We didn't want. She didn't want another five, six, seven hundred dollar car payment or whatever it may be, just to drive it. Never. You know what I mean? Because we always take the Mustang. So everybody's talking about money, this, money, that. It's like, well, first of all, don't try to be my financial advisor because you're not my mom or my dad. You know, let, let I can learn from my mistakes. I'm almost 34. I can, I've, I've owned a lot of stuff and I've owned a lot of stuff. So whatever, whatever. But uh, we might actually have a new vehicle coming here very soon. I think we may have possibly made a decision on something that I think is going to be fun. It's a little bit older and it's not fast. <laughs> but it's it's okay and I think the wife likes it so we will get there but we are uh, in Nashville traffic and uh, yeah leaving early was the right decision mm -hmm. so 
Well, anyway, it's not it's, not. it's not. It's not a Volkswagen bug. Anyway, but yeah, I imagine my insurance is going to go nuts after this. It but almost looks like he's towing a grill. It is. It looks like it is. Um, if you guys want some some uh, knowledge on what it looks like, it's going to cost to fix, fix the Mustang. Uh, we, we are heading to the airport to drop Jeremy off. He's let me borrow his car. Thank you so very much uh, for the duration of the report. Most of the duration of the repairs because he's a truck driver and he's going back on the road. So I'm going to look after his car. We're going to barely actually use it. Like during the week, I usually am on my motorcycle and, uh, you know, that's why I let the wife drive my car that night. And it was just, it was just a shit thing. Bad to, yeah, but it's like, as Andrew, you're such a terrible driver. It's like, you understand that the accidents were not at fault, right? Like yeah. that means that you couldn't help it. So how does that make me a bad driver? I've never crashed on track. So sorry, but you're wrong. You know what I mean? If somebody hits you, like the first one, somebody hit me and I was parked and I'm a bad driver. <laughs> that doesn't make any damn sense at all. But you know, pe people are, are uh, don't wreck that one. I'm not gonna say, that's what I'm talking about. Don't wreck that one. That's what I'm talking about right there. I didn't fucking drive the car. God damn it. Oh, I love all of you guys. You guys are awesome. <laughs> anyway, leave it parked. See, leave it parked. See, they, they know what I'm, they hear me talking. Yeah. It's not like I'm just talking to myself. Maybe I am. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, guys. Oh, um, it is what it is. It sucks. Life goes on. I know you. I know you guys are just joking. I'm just kidding with you. That's <laughs> that's why I'm not mad. It takes a lot to. Um, Xander likes to crash. <laughs> Screw the blower cost. It makes for well, good here, content. Here's Come on something now. else that was talked about. It's like you're spending so much in a blower. Uh, no, I'm not actually. <laughs> you guys, you guys know what sponsors are? We have the Hell Horse Performance shirt on. We're gonna do big things. Doesn't mean that I'm about to drop ten thousand dollars on my car. So, uh, I am so tempted to rest. Xander crash Bandicoot. <laughs> 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 Body shop wrecks on test drive. Oh hell! That's, <laughs> That's a great title. I love that one. That's a hell of a way to get a new car, though. You know, we are gonna. I will. I, it, we are going to. They, they're gonna have to chop up the. Um, yeah, they got to cut the car apart. Uh, you keep hurting, you keep hurting Mustangs. I'm gonna call beat on you. Uh, I know everybody in here is just kidding. There are uh, honestly a couple of people that do get to me. Like that's something. If you to answer the other guy's question too is like you're gonna have hate. The bigger you get, the more haters you're gonna get. And um, you have to be resilient. You have to just kind of you know take the good with the bad. Generally, but it's like you have. 1500 thumbs up on a video and you have like 30 that are down you know they're thumbs down and, but the, it's somehow those 30 that will really get to you and it's always they take it to like this personal yeah I do try to kill them with kindness I honestly do because what's the point in arguing with a uh, you know it's like having a text message fight with you know somebody it's pointless nobody's gonna win so what's what's the big deal the other thing too is they don't have any clue what goes on in my daily life they don't know me other than YouTube so but they try to take they try to like make personal attacks like they've like a, a you know verbally attacked you know like my wife and stuff like that which is really uncalled for and I I, I could delete the comments but I kind of leave them up because they look like idiots you know, uh, like if you want to make yourself look like a, a stupid moron by leaving some some hateful comment, um, attacking somebody's spouse because they just were in a car accident and almost killed, you go do you, man. You you yeah. yeah you know what I'm saying? So that's just it's pathetic. And uh, some of those con comments were just they were uncalled for. I mean, people can say what they want to say, but it's just like um, yeah, they can say what they can say, but I'm. It's to be a dick to be a dick. I mean, there's there's no reason for it. Yeah, it's it's um, 
and common courtesy is things to be a thing of the past. Yeah, I mean, shit. like he what said, just happened he with said the shitheads are all the shitheads. Yeah, I mean, it's. Uh, I mean, that dude was utterly shocked because those wheels didn't fit his car, and you're like, oh, you want to bring them back? Oh yeah, so that's that's true. So I sold a pair of. Um, I've had them listed for a while. I had some uh, race star, uh, dark stars, and some of them get advertised as like a, like a unit, or whatever. I thought that they would fit a guy's car. I sold them with the tires. I sold them for an undeclared, a very cheap amount um, because I just kind of wanted them gone. And he, he came to pick them up. He drove over an hour and a half away. I sold it to him for a very good, very good deal. He was very excited to get them, and he took them all the way home. And he was he was an older guy, and um, what happened was they didn't fit his car, and uh, so he messaged me. He's like, "Bro, they don't fit." And I was like, "What do you mean?" So we talked about it. And uh, very quickly, and he hadn't actually seen the, the text message yet, he was talking to his wife, and he was like, should I message him to drop the wheels off, you know, to take them back because they don't fit, see if, you know, to message him to see if he can get my money back. And uh, he was like, no, he, he's probably going to, you know, say, screw you, a sale is a sale, blah, blah, blah. And then what we did was the right thing. Before he even asked, I immediately texted him, and I was like, bro, they don't fit. I feel bad. Bring them back. I'll give you your money back. And that's what happened. He came back and he got his money back. I said, so the wheels are still in my garage. But that was the right thing to do. And that's honestly how I try to honestly carry myself every single day is to try to make some good in the world. And uh, some of it may be fun. And yes, sometimes, you know, cars get an accident and stuff. But, I mean, we try to we try to spread a positive message. What's a, oh, yeah, the terminal. Yes. So because what's dropped. Yeah, that's what I figured. So yeah, we're gonna wrap this up because we're about at, we're here at the airport. But it, my my thing is try to be nice to each other. <laughs> uh, try to spread positive influence instead of you know some people are just negative. Pay and that's forward. I mean, helping yeah. somebody out. You never know when you might need help. That's in return. very true. That's very true. So how much? Hit me up on Instagram. <laughs> because I got to get off. We got to end this live chat because the airport's right there. I can walk to it. So, all right. Hopefully, you guys enjoy this chat. Just some things to think about with the C8. Uh, if I get a C8, it won't be for like two or three years. So, and we will still have the Mustang. The Mustang is probably going to get caged and like a thousand horsepower. <laughs> uh, we shall see. But, all right, you guys take care. We've been live for an hour. I'll see all of you guys later. I'm probably going to drop another video either tonight or tomorrow. Um, but we did upload this uh, afternoon, so definitely go check out that. And it gives you an idea of how much it's going to cost to fix the Mustang. And it's kind of upsetting. But, all right, everybody, I'll see you guys later. Be safe. Have fun.